an Adivasi form of governance to shape the way parliamentary democracy works, it's going to need very strong changes within the structuring and the rules of parliament and the rules of business. Now, with the size of population we have, it's impossible, right? We've got 500, uh, whatever, 40 MPs. You can't operate a parliament if you're going to have two lakh MPs. It's impossible. So you forget it. So at the end, moment you start bring, bring, uh, bringing out a hierarchical system, you are going away from the traditional form of governance. You start devolving power down the ladder, okay, until it comes back to the village level, it does everything. Once, if you're willing to do that, then you would have a more functional form of democracy. But then which leader has ever sacrificed power? If the prime minister has no say over how anything is happening, if he has no say about a Vandai Bharat train being flagged off, right? If he has no say about a 2000 crore statue being built for uh, Sardar Patel, he will not give up his part. The conventional wisdom has been is these guys are illiterate, uneducated. They don't understand what they're doing. They will be exploited. Fine, I agree. Well, what is happening today? Are they not being exploited? Are they not being denied of the wealth which they're sitting on? They're not being allowed to enjoy the benefits, whatever they are, good or bad, of that wealth. Why should that happen? And why should someone else take it away? If you need sand to build your house and you're living in an area where there's no sand, use whatever natural resources you have or you pay for it. And if you're paying for it, shouldn't the payment be made to a person from where the sand's coming? Or should it be made to someone who's got nothing to do with it, but lifts it up and takes it to you, and the person whose sand is being removed has got nothing to say, for, say about it? You have to devolve power if you want your parliamentary democracy to actually flourish. And what then happens to parliament? It becomes a simple place where a representative comes and puts on the national table, these are the problems we have. And whatever the kitty wealth being created by the nation is decided that, okay, fine, these are the problems here, there, now this is how we'll allocate the funds for use. And this how it should be not uh, you know, remote decision by someone who's, f who's just doing electoral politics. So if you can give me more MPs, you get more money, but not where it's needed. If I want to build a railway st uh, a line, it's existing from Ranchi to Calcutta, right? Then the villages which that line goes through have the ultimate say in that railway line being built. So when anything is being done, they are the first ones who are going to come forward and take credit for it. Do we want that to happen? No. If, as I, as I pointed out earlier, if I've got sand in my village and I will choose which contractor is going to lift the sand, which bureaucrat sitting in the Ministry of Mining is going to agree to that and which minister is going to agree to that because he's got no say. But then that is democracy. You're, you're putting power into the hands of the people who actually get mattered who are affected by that decision, right or wrong.